evening viewers. Today we are going to be talking about prisons, the different types there are in the world, and how they treat inmates. Miss Marina, the social worker, is going to tell us about prisons in Cosias Rebus, where she has been working for a few years. On my right, we have two people from Amnesty International who are talking about prisons of other countries and generally for Amnesty International. Ms. Marina, would you like to tell us about prisons in Nicosia? Uh, yes, first of all, the prisons have a high technological security system uh, with close circuit television, and because of that, we adopt the open prison system. They have workshops and farms. The prison furniture is made from the inmates. You said farms. Explain us what people do in farms. Uh, these farms are outside the prison and are provided for the prisoners to cultivate crops and look after and feed the chickens and rabbits. The prisoners are allowed to work if they have shown good behavior and are nearing the end of their prison sentence. At the moment there are about 80 inmates, but we hope we increase the number in the future. Can you give us some information about the open prison system? Uh, the open prison system allows the inmates to grow useful and constructive to the community. Do you believe that this helps people? Because some people think that um, inmates should be punished hard. Uh, it's a very successful system, and because in 1986 prisoners of up to 31 years of age were released after serving their time, 26% of those men committed a crime and returned to prison. In 1992, only 6% of the total number released came back. Well, that proof shows the success of the open prison system. You have some photographs there, I believe. Can you show them to the viewers and tell them a little bit about the photo? Yes, at the first picture, and the inmates are cultivating their talent and their communication skills in acting. Uh, at the second picture, uh, is a scene from the inmates' performance. And at the third picture, uh, the inmates are producing something very fine. Uh, it's an exhibition and specifically a handmade bowl. Did you organize an exhibition where people can see this work? Yes, we had an exhibition last year and we're going to have another one next month. Do these prisoners have contact with their families? Uh, we make sure that the prisoners keep in touch with their families and we are ready to solve any problems they have. Thank you very much, Ms. Marina, for the useful information you gave us. Now we are going to see a different situation. Ms. Andrea and Ms. Rea from Amnesty International are going to inform us about the prisons in different countries. Ms. Andrea, would you like to start? Uh, yes. Um, as we all know, in many countries, um, they kill people because of what language they speak, what color they have, um, or even um, what they believe. Uh, and this is unacceptable in the century that we live. Um, these prisoners, um, we call them uh, prisoners of conscience, and a very good example is a young boy called Kalim. Um, he was 12 years old and he killed them because he supported the views of his parents. Um, uh, and in the prisons, uh, they make them uh, many tortures, uh, not only physical, um, like electric shocks, uh, sexual assault, or even beating them until they die. But also they do them in psychological tortures, like um, sleep, eat, um, they threat them that they will kill someone that let they love, or they don't let them sleep, eat, and they keep, they keep them in totally isolation. Uh, apart from, from, all that, from all that, in those countries they use death penalty. Um, which um, is unfair, unjust, and immoral because we all know that the law can make mistakes. So, just imagine how many people um, died because of this penalty and they were innocent. Government must, be, must realize that they don't have the right to kill a human being. But surely this is against the Declaration of Human Rights. Ms. Ra, would you like to tell us a little more about this? Yes. Here I have the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights and specifically Article 5 says that no one is subjected to torture or to cruel inhuman or degraded treatment or punishment to any human being. Yes, this is very serious. Now, about Amnesty International, can you tell us a little more about this? Yes, it was first created in 1948 and where United Nations adopted and proclaimed the universal and human rights. 
our organization, Amnesty International, it's a worldwide human rights, independent of any government's political or religious ideology. And our work is to write a short letter to the heads of the government, and we apply pleasure to the governments, or we can expose them partly with the help of the media. Does your organization have any effect? Yes, 38 cases out of 42 have been closed, but those thousands that they haven't was because prisoners have been killed or they have died. But many thousands of prisoners are now free thanks to the work of the organization like Amnesty International. Well, that's a, that's a big difference. Um, can you, what people can do uh, by watching us and joining Amnesty International? Well, they can pay 15 per year, or if they are under 22 years old, they can pay 6, or they can contact us at 19 Rosebury Avenue in London. Okay, thank you. Andrea, would you like to mention something? I just want to say that governments in those countries, they must realize that um, all people have the same rights, and there must be no uh, discrimination between men and women, um, color, religions, and political beliefs. Thank you. I think we've come to the end of the program. Uh, surely there is a lot of work we have to do. From the information that Ms. Marina gave us, we learned that uh, prisons in Cyprus are anti-democratic alliance. Uh, thank you, people.